All right, what's up guys? Today, I'm in Central Rock Gym, Cambridge. And I came to Cambridge because today we're gonna do a vlog on bouldering. And our special guest will be sharing the five secrets to getting better at bouldering. So I brought with me, Troy! How's it going, guys? All right, so Troy, people keep asking me, what are the secrets to bouldering? And I figured I would come talk to you. He's just built up over the years, really strong fingers, and that's from bouldering, right? Yeah, definitely. Bouldering's kind of the only thing uh, that I do in climbing. Uh, a lot of my friends will joke around and say, the only time I ever put a harness on is when I go and hangboard. So bouldering is uh, definitely my specialty. It's what I love about climbing. So I'm super excited to share some of these secrets for you guys. So secret number one, we're starting off kind of basic. Uh, it's not too much of a secret, but it is something a lot of people overlook in their progression. Uh, you have to be climbing consistently. Climbing is such a unique sport. It uses a lot of really unique muscles and stabilization in your body. And the best way to get good at climbing is climbing. When I first started climbing, you know, I picked it up really fast. I loved it. Uh, I was in the gym four, five, maybe six days a week. Uh, you don't have to be climbing that much, depending on the length of your sessions, the intensity of your sessions, how your body is feeling. Um, but you should be climbing with some relative consistency. At least two or three times a week if you want to see some serious progression. More if you're feeling better. If you're feeling a little bit weak um, or kind of injured that day, there's plenty of other things that you can do in the gym. The great thing about climbing is you don't always need to be climbing something super steep, something very uh, physically demanding. Um, you can go on the slab, a less steep wall, work on your technique, um, and just improve your general comfort on the wall. But the consistency is key. Yeah, upping the number of days that you're climbing is definitely um, going to improve your ability. But you should be targeting your weaknesses. If you notice that you plateaued, try and figure out why you plateaued. Um, if there's certain holds that you're struggling on, if it's certain type of movements, really try and focus on those weaknesses. Uh, and get some feedback from people in the gym. Climbing has one of the most friendly communities that I've ever been a part of. Um, so you should never be afraid to approach someone in the gym, ask them for beta, ask them, you know, what they do to train, uh, how many days they climb, just kind of get a feel um, and just broaden your knowledge of the sport. Because all of that is going to uh, collect and over time you will see improvement. All right, Troy, so what's secret number two? All right, so secret number two uh, is not to overanalyze the grades or the difficulty of the climbs. Um, grades are a great long-term guideline to kind of track your progression, but in the short term, you're gonna find a lot of the times that maybe a V4 feels a lot easier than a V2. That could be a whole number of things. Uh, the style of the climb, the type of holds, things I discussed earlier. There could be any number of reasons as to why, you know, a higher numbered climb may feel easier or less difficult than a lower number climb. But don't get too caught up in the numbers of the climb. Keep in mind that there's so many different styles and there's so many different skills to master in climbing that this might just be one of those weaknesses that I discussed that you should be working on. Here in Cambridge, we actually will set uh, a full section of the wall every Monday and we'll leave those climbs totally ungraded for the first week just to let everyone try um, those climbs without kind of the, the pressure of, uh, of the grades getting to them. The other thing I noticed is like people not even trying the grades out because they're like, oh, I can't even climb that grade. And so they don't even give it a shot. But whereas if you don't put the grade on there, then I feel like you can push yourself. Absolutely, that's actually uh, brings me to the third secret of bouldering is to push yourself. Um, in addition to not getting too wrapped up in the number, don't be afraid to put yourself out of your comfort zone and try something that you've never tried before. Just because you've never climbed you know, above V5 doesn't mean that you can't try a V6 if it looks inviting. If that climb looks fun, get on it. See how you uh, see how you do on it. You might surprise yourself. Uh, as long as you go into the climb without any expectations, the only thing you can do is surprise yourself. So just get on, get on a little bit of everything. Put yourself out of your comfort zone and don't get too wrapped up in the numerical grades of the climb. So what is the next 
secret. All right, so the next uh, secret I got for you guys is, so I see a lot of people in the gym getting really excited on limit projecting every time they come in here. And that's great, you wanna be pushing your limit, but if you're not having the ideal day, uh, it's good to get some volume in. Kind of simmer down on the difficulty a little bit and go for more climbs. So limit projecting is trying boulders that are basically at the upper echelon of what you have climbed. It's your maximum ability level. So if you're coming in here and you're trying climbs that you know might take you multiple sessions to work through um, and they're at your physical limit, you can't climb at your physical limit every day and you can't expect to be at your peak performance. Um, so a great substitute if you're not feeling on your A game on a certain day is bring the difficulty down a couple of notches and just do as many climbs as you can. Focus on perfect technique, um, focus on your hand placement. Everything should be very in control and just go for as many climbs as you can. And going off of that, if you are feeling injured or if something is feeling sore, no climb is worth the injury. If your long-term goal is progression, an injury could put you out and set you back. So we wanna make sure that we're always careful, we're always warming up. Okay, and what is the last secret? All right, so the last secret, uh, and this is something I'm actually somewhat guilty of myself, is you wanna try and repeat boulders uh, that you've done before. Going back to those limit boulders that I was talking about, climbs that are at your maximum difficulty grade. If you manage to accomplish and send one of those climbs, that's awesome. But again, if your long-term goal is progression, we wanna master that level. So just because you've climbed it, doesn't necessarily mean that you've mastered that climb. So if you come in the next session you're back, try and do that climb again. Don't be surprised if it gives you a little bit of trouble because remember that is your physical limit. So don't be afraid, get in, try and repeat the climb, go through the process of projecting again. And once you can come in here and just do that climb on command, then you can move on and say, okay, I've mastered this climb. And that should be some, some gratifying uh, improvement right there. Troy, thank you so much, man. This was so helpful. I hope you guys all like this and we'll catch you later. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya. Yeah, we got Kevin in the vlog. Do you guys know what the five secrets to bouldering are? Don't let go. Five secrets, what? <laughs> are the five secrets of bouldering just like the seven wonders of the world? <laughs> I don't know. Seven secrets of bouldering. <laughs> they didn't tell you the sixth secret. Wait, there's a sixth? Yeah. Stay, Stay tuned. <laughs>